Good morning. It was just one month ago today that we all gathered on the lawn on a picture-perfect day to begin this 2021-2022 school year together. I am still drawing from the feeling of being a whole and in-person school that morning with so much possibility in front of us, possibility we have begun to realize over the past month. My sense is that this first month has been a lot for us in all kinds of ways, adjusting to being physically together again, adjusting to the ins and outs of a new daily schedule, adjusting to teachers and students and peers we are just beginning to know, adjusting to make our way around a slowly shrinking worksite in the middle of our campus, adjusting to academic workloads that are likely a bit heavier than what we experienced last year. There's no doubt that the beginning of a school year and particularly the beginning of a school year in a pandemic requires a lot of adjusting and not as much medium and long-term certainty as I, for one, would like. If there are silver linings to this reality, and I've been trying to find silver linings throughout the pandemic, one might be that in all of this adjusting, we are developing an important skill, comfort with ambiguity, or phones that ring while you're giving a talk accidentally. That's okay, it adds spice to the talk. And if it's the chaplain, what are you supposed to do? Um, but in any case, comfort with ambiguity, or maybe comfort with our discomfort with ambiguity. A good thing either way, I think. And this inability to be all that sure about what conditions might be like next week or next month or in six months leads to another silver lining. The silver lining of having little choice but to focus on the present. This has never been a strength of mine, and I've noted on other occasions a tendency I have to spend too much time wandering in thought about the past or future. In this way, the pandemic has pushed me to be in the present and be appreciative and grateful for what I have on any given day. Well, I tend to think there is more to appreciate and be grateful for on some days as opposed to others. This time of year is right up there when I think about the points in a Brooks School calendar year that I cherish most. Today, one month into our school year, we are heading into the heart of fall or autumn, depending on your preferred term. I prefer fall. All the seasons have their strengths. But I'm not sure there is anything better than the perfect fall day at Brooks School. Let me try to paint a picture of what I think is the perfect fall day on our campus. I've done this before, and it changes a bit every time. I would start with the air, both temperature and dew point. The perfect air temperature is 68 degrees. This is not really debatable. A light sweater or sweatshirt feels perfect in this kind of weather. You can wear shorts, but you don't have to. 68, take it from me. The more important number, however, is dew point. I confess to still not totally understanding what dew point measures, but Google provides a nice summary. And all you really need to know is the higher the dew point, the greater the amount of moisture there is in the air. And moisture in the air is unpleasant. In the people also ask part of my Google search, dew point levels were described this way, and I quote, a dew point between 55 and 60 is noticeably humid. It's muggy when the dew point is about 60, and it's uncomfortable outside when it ticks up to 65. Any dew point readings above 70 are oppressive and even dangerous. The kind of stickiness you experience in the tropics or during a brutal summer heat wave, end quote. So, when the dew point is under 55, or better yet, at the perfect dew point level of 46, it was 49 this morning when I woke up, you can't wait to get outside and breathe it in. Crisp, clean air that makes you feel good to be alive. Dew point is the key to it all. From the air, I would then turn. 
to, to the sky. My perfect fall day with the air temperature at 68 degrees and the dew point at 46 degrees also includes deep, deep blue sky with barely a cloud in sight. As MarianWebster.com notes, and I quote, on a blue sky day, it's easy to look up into the far reaching atmosphere and marvel at the wonders that it holds, end quote. That's the shade of blue I have in mind. Today is pretty close. Add light and variable winds in the five to 10 mile per hour range and trees beginning to turn spectacular shades of red, orange, and yellow, and you have the perfect fall day. I don't know how many perfect fall days I've enjoyed during my years at Brooks, but I do know that at every phase of my life here, I've come to appreciate our natural surroundings on this campus a bit more, and from lots of different vantage points. Coaching soccer on a perfect fall day afternoon and thinking to myself, what job could be better than this? Walking a dog on the fire trail with sunlight sparkling on the lake. Taking a stroll with one of my children when they were little kids and awestruck by the vastness of our beautiful school backyard. Seeing students outdoors all over the campus, playing any number of games or swinging in a hammock or just hanging out. A part of what I learned during the early stages of the pandemic was the vital importance this piece of earth plays in the experience we have together. This was most acute during the spring of 2020 when no students were here and the whole place just lay fallow and unused. I hope and believe you will find your way back to Brooks at later stages in your life. When you do, the beauty of what is your campus will stand out. It always does. Spouses, partners, and friends who return with you will be astounded that you went to high school here on such a spectacular piece of earth. So when I think it's possible that a Brooks School student might spend their entire career here and never walk the fire trail, I cringe at the notion. It can't happen, and we, the school, have an obligation to get you beyond Main Street and into the nooks and crannies of our 270 acres. Six years ago this month, I was wrestling with this desire to get the school out and about to take in your amazing campus on a perfect fall day if one presented itself. Six years ago, I noted in my, that my plea alone wouldn't have worked on me when I was 17 years old. I then thought, how do we get students to explore the campus? What is the trick? The answer then and the answer now, Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle is the answer. So this morning, after a multi-year hiatus due to the pandemic and poor planning on my part, I'm pleased to reintroduce the Chipotle Challenge. And this year, we are going back to the original challenge from six years ago, when the current sixth form was in sixth grade. Think about that. Here's how it will work. I'm going to share five of my favorite locations on the campus with all of you. These are locations that I find beautiful and inspiring in different ways when I find myself there. And I'm betting that the draw of a catered, legitimate Chipotle dinner, perhaps hosted at my temporary residence, also known as the mansion, will get you out into the splendor of our amazing campus. There is no maximum number of attendees at the dinner. If the whole school does the challenge, the whole school has Chipotle at the mansion. What could be better? First, the rules. In a group of at least four people, you must visit all five of my favorite places on campus and take a photograph or short video of your group at each location. You then must share those photographs or videos with me. You can email them to me if you'd like. Once I verify that you have visited the correct five locations, your group will be officially be invited to a Chipotle catered dinner that will happen before we break for Thanksgiving. You have until noon on Wednesday, October 20th 
to complete the challenge 13 days from now. The group that submits the best set of pictures on as close to my version of a perfect fall day, and today is such a day, will get bonus points. So what are this year's five locations, you wonder? Here they are, and I'll send this out by email after chapel. Number one, while the house I am currently living in leaves much to be desired, the land and view of the lake are truly unbelievable. So you need to head for the boathouses. Bear left where the Burbank, Campbell, and Dobbins families live. Keep going when the road dead ends through the stone wall cutout. Veer to the right of the tree that will be in your way and into the middle of the lawn. First, take in the panoramic view of the lake. Then, take a picture or video of your group with the lake in the background. Number two, I love the stone and bench memorials on our campus, and there are two right near the door to Holcomb Boathouse. The stone memorial there remembers Peter Nicholson, also remembered in the back of the chapel, class of 1979, and lies tucked into the beginning of the trees. You need to look for it. The bench remembers Joe St. Cyr, class of 2014, who passed away two years ago next month. Both died tragically and young and will forever be remembered here when we visit this location. Take your picture or video with your group sitting on or around the bench and stone with the endless Lake Vista behind you. It is spectacular. Number three, if you walk the fire trail from the boathouses, you will eventually get to a knoll that juts out well above the water where you can look to the left, straight and right, with beautiful trees along the shore and lots of water in all directions. Breathe it in and take a picture or video with the lake behind all of you. Number four, while trying to avoid ticks, make your way up to the observatory and look back at your school to see it differently. It's quite a view from there. Take a picture or video from that spot in whatever way you are moved to do. And number five, there is, there is a seldom seen plaque on a big rock honoring Oscar Root near the north entrance, the entrance that's usually closed. Oscar Root was on the faculty from 1933 until his passing in 1969. There's a prize given every year in his honor. He was a biology teacher who planted many of the well over 100 species of beautiful trees we have on our campus and cared for them in much the same way that Mr. St. Cyr does so impressively these days. Find the plaque honoring Oscar Root and take a picture of your group there at the northern end of our 270 acres. I do hope you'll take on the challenge over these next 13 days and share your pictures and videos with me. I also hope you'll find your own places on our campus that become meaningful to you places that allow you to be present with others or just your own thoughts. Our campus affords us that privilege, and there's no better time to capture it than right now, today even. So I will look forward to what you come up with and to both a night or two or three with all the chipotle we can eat and a deeper connection to our campus we will all share. Have fun. Thank you.